And uh, we uh, don't live too far from here, but uh, 20, 30 minute drive. I haven't been in a revival or a teaching session in several years that I didn't have to drive an hour, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> And it's a real joy and a real honor for me to be with you tonight. Appreciate my brother coming. A great singer we use a lot on television. He's one of the television family. And uh, have a lot of people call me and, and you know, talk, want to know how they can get up with him, different things, you know, and different things of that nature. It's wonderful when a when the young man will just start singing and he can sing. Amen. When I started preaching, uh, I had I had three uh, pockets like Brother Joe just mentioned, but I soon found out I didn't have one. And that was the same. <laughs> Occasionally I had a pocketbook. Secondly, I had a Bible book, but uh, I might give you a little background. Of, uh, some of you all probably never uh, sit under anything like this. Has anybody here ever sit under a teaching? You have raised your hand. One, two, three, four, five. All right, this is a, a, a chart that was made by uh, this. Dave's, Dave's Publishing Company, Jennings State. I had the privilege when my younger life, younger ministry, of meeting him face to face. I lived in this town called Richlands. There was a preacher who came out of uh, uh, Texas, and he went to the Baptist Church there, or pastor of the Baptist Church there in Richlands, and he had him to come for a revival. And he seemed like he kind of liked me because he would talk to me after service. And he had where he had, he'd show you where he had a place in his carpet where he prayed every day and had wore the carpet out. His knees sure had wore them out. Yeah. Carving his home. Or offers the word he, he studied. And he had this, and I thought, well, that's a wonderful thing. And you, you take, I was saved when I was 27 years old. And I started preaching when I was 27 years old. So I've been preaching several eight. <laughs> <laughs> and you take a guy 27 years old, I just started preaching. I didn't know hardly anything about the Bible. But I sit and listen and ask questions, and I bought his uh, literature and everything, and later in life I got one of his Bibles. I believe with all my heart we've had some great men in America in this generation. Yeah. yeah. Like Billy Graham, he was a wonderful man. He was, he was with after souls. Or Roberts, was a great man and he preached healing. I've sat under him uh, a few times and I've saw miracles that, that you would hardly, not hardly believe, but it's true. I'll give you one little instance. I was in, we was down in, in uh, I think it was down in Carolina somewhere, in a big tent, he had a tent there. We went to him and he, he, after he got through preaching, he, he got a, a chair and he sat out on his thing there and then people came and they walked like that. And he, this little girl came up to him, about nine or ten years old, if I was guessing her age. He looked at her and he said, what do you want the Lord to do for you? She opened her mouth and she didn't have any teeth. And she said, I want you to pray that God will give me a set of teeth. He prayed and he said, now open your mouth. She opened her mouth and she had a set of teeth. <laughs> Thanks the Lord. And I saw that. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people don't believe in that. You know, we got a, we've got a group of uh, 
people in the world today, some believes this, some believes done. Some don't know how to believe, and some don't believe at all. That's the truth. And so on. That's the truth. Yeah. But, you know, the Bible's right. Every man a liar. I mean, hey, man. Man. I mean the denomination uh, don't make the hill of beans difference. Uh, uh, right. That ain't going to bring you, when you get to heaven, he's going to say, well, you was this or you was that. Come on in. No, no, no. Right. No, no. If you're not careful, it, it might send you to the wrong place. Right. right. A lot of folks talk in right. this in the day. But I'd like to start with a chart today and kind of give you a little previews for this. And, you know, what you need to do now, you need to heal your friends and you need to come back every night because if you miss a night, you miss something. There's, there's several things uh, uh, that we want to talk about tonight and they're called dispensations of time. Now the word dispensation means time, time, T-I-M-E, time. A dispensation is a space of time, all right? We, we start right here, it is the creation of God. We come on right over here, and it's the creation of innocence. And then we have the uh, uh, a lot of the countries and so forth, the old Roman Empire, and all of these things here. It shows you here where uh, paradise was before Jesus went to the cross, and where hell is, and all of these things like this. And we come on right over here to the catching way of the church. And from here over to uh, here, from this point over to here, is uh, seven years of tribulation. Then we have the battle of Armageddon. We have a thousand years of millennial reign. And then we have uh, uh, Revelation 21, 22. And the uh, sinners will be uh, uh, judged. And then the eternal perfect state of God. All right. <clears throat> I, 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 I want to start with you and, and talk to you. Uh, and I want to start on with the uh, with Genesis. We, we know if you read the Bible, the Bible said in the beginning God created the earth and heaven, so, and the earth was without form and void, uh, and He the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep. So we know that God uh, was forever and forever. So I said, where did God come from? Well, He's always been here. Read the his Psalm, and you'll find out. He said that he was from everlasting dead. Right. There is no beginning. There is no end with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's my Savior. He's, he's got a son called Jesus. Yeah. And he's got a spirit yeah. that leads me and helps me and guides me. Amen. Uh, amen. Down through life. Uh, you know, I've been preaching 58 years uh, and uh, all over the country and travel a lot now and so forth. And But I enjoy every day that I have read a mile that I've spent. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't travel uh, for the money in, in it like uh, a lot of people does, but uh, God's provided, He'll provide, He always has, always will. And so, and I appreciate all of you that uh, watch me on television. I've been on, on my 13th year. I'm the only preacher that's on six times a week for an hour. And you talk about taking a lot of money, <coughs> we will discuss that. <laughs> but I have a God that's got plenty of it. Amen. All you have to do is ask him. That's all, that's all you have to do is ask him. And you don't have to beg him. All right, we want to start out here and talk about the dispensation of creation. All right, God created the earth, the water. Every single thing that's on this earth, God created. Right. All right. We find how the word create is a dispensation of time right here. It started right here. God in the eternal part, the plan of the ages, the plan of the kingdom, the creation of the uh, angels, and then here the solar system that we enjoy today. All right? And then we, we find how that he created uh, everything that exists in today. All right, there wasn't nobody on this pretty earth. Now, I don't know about you all, but I think, you know, uh, the country, especially uh, uh, around this country, is not a bad place, you know. You know, I've been to better places, but uh, I've been, we've been in Bristol a long time, and the uh, only thing I see here are taxes pretty high, but we'll talk about that. Well, your chart, the, the second circle after the... the uh Solar system. Uh -huh. I was up there earlier, and that says recreation. Yeah, all right, I'll get to that just oh, in a minute. Okay. All right, okay, see, 
This is his first creation. And that is a good question because all right, he created everything, everything here. All right. He put the water in the place, he put the land in the place, and he put every single thing in place. Every bug, every fish, everything we had. And he, he made chickens, that's one of many. But he couldn't let the snakes off. <laughs> but he didn't see that. But he, he brought it all on, all, all, all right. And then, all right, then when you talk about your recreation, or what he is doing there in recreation is this, that he is recreating you and I, men, women, boys, girls, all right? All right, we find how that uh, whenever he uh, uh, created everything, he looked at it and he said it's good. All right, then he had the solar system, the, he restored the ferment, the dry land, the vegetation, the solar, and all that, and the fish, and, and the fowls, and the lambs, and the animals, and all of that. And then we, we come here, all right, then he said, here, all right, we need to, we need to do just a little bit more just a little bit more in a fresh There's nobody here but, but, but me. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about God now. Right. I said, nobody here but me. And that, that and we need to have a little bit more attraction, a little, little bit more things uh, are going on. And he's not going to recreate. And that, that, that is a good up. He's, he, he said, I'm going to recreate. And then we're, we're going to have a man, and we're, and we're going to put him here, and he's going to have eyes. He'll have a nose, he'll have an ear, he'll have a mouth, and he'll feel and touch, and, and he'll be a body and a spirit and a soul. Yeah. So he recreated because there's nothing there. Right. But when he created, and he said, this is a nice country, you know. And, you know, when you stop and study that, I'll tell you a little bit later on uh, what was wrong here. When you think about it, in the beginning of time, it was wonderful. I mean, it was just, it, 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 it was just something that God created in a beautiful place. When, when you stop and study about it, you know, we wonder why the world is in the condition that it is tonight. Well, I'll tell you later on, so don't miss that night. Uh, we need to realize God did a great job. But then whenever he saw it was so good, and it's so wonderful, and you, you know, there's a trinity in heaven, God the Father, Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Don't right. you think they might have a little meaning of it up there? I, the Bible I don't plainly say that, but if you think a little bit, God give you a thinking cap, so he wants you to think a little bit. He, he could have said, well, this is nice, uh, but we need something on it. Well, we need to put uh, cows, we need to put horses, uh, and we need to put bugs. Uh, uh, amen. We need to uh, do this and do that and so on. And you look at it and you think, why are they out there? Well, God had a reason. Uh, all right, then we find he recreated uh, uh, what he had started and put these things on it and they put man on it and put him, and he's got a nose and, and he can feel and, uh, and so on, you know. Uh, when you stop and study about a human being, uh, you know, uh, we are really uh, blessed with uh, great things, uh, amen, because God uh, made man and God made a good man. Uh, amen. So see, uh, the word uh, uh, here, when he created, uh, uh, amen, God uh, planned the ages. Uh, he, had a, a, he, had, he planned them. And then he planned for the kingdom. Uh, and he planned for the angels. Uh, and then he created the material universe. Uh, and he created uh, uh, the original solar system. And he kind of uh, said, we've got to divide this up. Uh, and we're going to make a day and we're going to make a night. Yeah. And, we, and, we, and we'll separate the water from the land. Mm -hmm. Right. And so everything was in order. What I'm trying to say is in order. Mm -hmm. And this is a dispensation of, of time uh, uh, that God uh, created everything that we have today. Uh, <coughs> he was in the original earth uh, uh, here in uh, uh, Genesis 1 and 1 uh, and 4. Uh, uh, 18 Proverbs 8 23 restored the earth in 1 3 2 3 and 2 Peter 3 5. All right, then he had all the earth, uh, and then we go uh, over here, uh, uh, and there he, he recreated, uh, he recreated and put man in the 
his position. And so he looked at man and he, and he said, I'm, I'm going to create uh, someone to take care of this place. Uh, so he got down and got the dirt uh, uh, off the ground uh, and he breathed into that dirt's nostrils uh, and they became a living soul. Uh, amen. You know, uh, sometimes when you think that uh, we are somebody, then we'll be proud uh, that we are somebody because we're made out of dirt. Right. And we realize that. So there, so there's many dispositions of, of time uh, and, and uh, many things about uh, the dispositions of time. Uh, it's an error of uh, a time which man is tested and inspected and tried uh, in different aspects of uh, the creation. So after that, he created. Uh, after that, he created uh, the heavens and the earth, and he recreated, uh, uh, and then he made man in his own image. Uh, all right, first, before man, he, he made something else. Who knows what that he made before he made man? Anybody? The animals. Angels. Did you say angels? I said the animals. Land animals. Yeah. Well, I, I know he made the, 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 the animals, before he created man, what did he, he what did he create? He created the angels. The Bible said the angels didn't hang around about them, but they didn't fear him. All right, angels are. Right. He created multitudes of angels. When you when you study about the angels and think about it, uh, he created the earth, uh, and then uh, uh, the dispossession of angels come along, uh, and Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, Genesis 1, 28, and the length of time, uh, that they don't give you exact length of time, uh, and the angels wash here before man comes. Amen, there's a, there's a question mark there, and we don't know exactly there, but we think about in the beginning where there was a perfect world, a perfect world. Man has not got here yet. Man was not here yet. But the earth is here, the water is here, the animals is here, everything is perfect. All right, then he, he got angels. Now see, I feel like at many times we don't really understand God to a position of the place, but I really believe that, uh, well, I know so, I mean, I mean, God is God. I mean, that, that's no ifs and maybe about it. That's it. God is God. Right. And he knows what's what. All right. Amen. And we are a partaker of that. So, you know, I thought about the song the young, young man sang. That was wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I heard a preacher say this. I'll put this in for good measure. will cost you a thing. Uh, he, he said that and when we got to heaven, we'd have a body of passion like Jesus did. And Jesus was 33 and a half years old. And we'll have a body at 33 and a half years old. Everybody will. Every baby will be 33 and a half. Every man. Amen, brother. We can, uh, uh, you know, they, we can throw the canes away the, and the, uh, all that stuff. And, you know, when I was 33 and a half years old, man, I thought they had the world by the tail and a downhill swing, you know. I've been preaching a lot and I thought uh, a lot uh, was going on. Huh? Amen. But I don't know that that would be true, but I looked at scripture uh, and uh, I can tell you who, who preached that. You probably uh, heard the same thing. But, but, Jesus, he said, you'll have a body of passion like mine, all right? And so he, whether or not he has, whether or not you're 33 and a half years old, you have a body that's passion like the Son of God, and one thing, you won't get sick. Right. And you won't have a headache. Amen. And you won't have a backache. And you won't have all these things here. And to me, if you if you get rid of the pain in life today, it'd be a pretty nice way of life, right, brother? Hallelujah to God. Amen. When you get to Amen above 39, you have few pains, you know. And so we find out that everything was rolling right. It rolling down. So what did God do? He created angels. He created angels. You find that in, in the perfect world you had in Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19, Colossians 1, uh, uh, 15 through 19, and it's and then we find, and he tested them to be obedient to rule under God. All right, the angels were submissive unto God, but 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 what happened? Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 20, and all those, and it was about one that was the brightest, <coughs> the prettiest, and everything about the angels 
So he decided that he wanted to be God. Right. And he took his crew with him, and God threw them out of heaven. And we call him the devil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm right, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him. He's mean. He don't like you. Yeah. Why don't you get saved? All right. So we're coming down as we go down through a life. We're coming and finding that the angels, that the angels was created and their various ways. And they, and, but God saw when the devil came and tried to overthrow the throne, we find how that God realized and knew, uh, I, I'm sure he knew beforehand, but there was a purpose in what he did. And we find how that he threw, he tested the angels uh, before allowing them to rule the universe. He tested the angels before he was going to turn them loose. But one of them didn't test. And we have that today. So he took all of his them that were following after him. I don't care what, if you're not careful, you will follow after something that don't fully agree with the Word of God. The Word of God will stand when the world is melting down. Amen. Amen. And this chart, if you will take verse by verse, you will find it starts at Revelation, at Genesis, and ends in Revelation. Throughout the scriptures, you will find how that God controls everything. Then we find how the, he was he had that so he threw the enemy out. And then he said, we need someone. All right, then what he did is I said a moment ago, <coughs> he created man. He and Adam created. There was no sin, no Nothing in that day. So I imagine that he said to Adam, I'm going to give you a helpmate. So he put Adam to sleep, and there came a woman. He created a woman and gave it to Adam. And said, now you can go into this place that I'm going to show you here. And he said, there's a tree of life there. There's knowledge here, and there's a lot and you can have everything here except one. Yeah. All right, what he was doing was testing mankind. Yeah. You know, I believe with all my heart that God sometimes tests people to see what they'll do. Yeah, man. Right, absolutely. I believe that. Yeah, I really do. I know we, we've had some terrific weather. A man asked me, uh, talking about the storms and all, all that and things of, of that nature. We don't know exactly why. It's hard. It's not a, it's something that you have an answer to, but it is hard. But we find out that the angels, the, the creation of angels, and then the how that he went on the uh, recreation when he started. First day, six literally days he did on the recreation of everything. Everything, six days. Seven days he rested. I think it's ridiculous how that so many things goes on on Sunday. Right. I really do. First day, he restored the light. Genesis 1. Second day, he restored the furnace. Third day, restored the dry land and the vegetation. Fourth day, he restored the solar system. The fifth day, he created fish and fowl for Adam and Eve to eat. Sixth day, he said, tired. On rest. Brother Carter, if yeah. he created all this in the beginning perfect, and he had to recreate, who ruled that, that original creation? When the original creation, God ruled it. 
God ruled that. Yeah, created. God ruled that. And then when he recreated that, he made man a free moral agent. And he told him, he said, you can have all this except one tree. See, sin came in the Garden of Eden through Adam and Eve. The devil come and said, you can eat of that tree and you'll be as, as, as like God. Well, she listened to that, and she took of that, and then sin came into the world. All right, then when sin came into the world, then we become a free moral agent. Then he tested Adam and Eve in the garden. And when he rested there, he said, it's yours, I'm, I'm on, you, it's yours to, to uh, uh, get it and eat, eat and, and, and get it in the field and make you food and all that stuff, you know. And so, see, Adam and Eve disobeyed God, or Eve did, and she gave it to Adam. But still, it's the same thing. He said, that woman that you gave me, you know, they, uh, and we're living in, in a day today, it seems like a lot of people, uh, they like to throw it over on somebody else. You know, this is wrong because somebody else did right. this, you know. You know what? We have a right to do what we want to do. We're a free moral agent person. Right. Uh, you can decide what you want to do, where you want to go, and what you want to do when you get there. Yeah. If you want to go to heaven, somebody said, you can't live right. No, that's not right either. Amen. You can live right if you want to live. Right. You, right. Right. you can go to church if you want to go to church. You know, we are people today, and we want to do what, uh, uh, amen, what people uh, think. People say, you know, you, know, you shouldn't do that. You do that. Uh, amen. When I first went on television, I had some people tell me, they said, you're crazy. You're too old to go on television. I said, no, I'm not. Because I like to do it, and I don't mean to quit, bless God, unless the uh, Lord uh, uh, stops the money room. Uh, and for I uh, can't pay the bill, I have to quit. But right now, I, I don't feel like I, that I have to do that. And so I have a choice. I made a choice. Uh, amen. When I was 27 years old, uh, uh, to serve God, I got saved. Uh, uh, my mom and dad was Christian. We were raised in a Christian home. Uh, but I made a decision. Uh, I made many mistakes down through life. I never been a perfect man. I drank you. No, right. you, you know, you haven't either. And you never will be as far as that concerned. Huh? And that's why he put over there in First John about uh, one night. He's faithful and just forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God, thank God for repentance. Huh? Yeah. And, uh, and I mentioned in my sermon yesterday, uh, talking about a sermon, and I, and I said, you know, when you have to repent, Every morning, every night, throughout the day, all day long. All right, see, that's what he said. He was testing him. So we are a free moral agent. We have a right to choose how, what we want and how we want it. If you want to serve God, ain't a devil in hell stop you. Right. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And sin came uh, when Adam and Eve sinned. Now, if you had the sin out of this world and over on the end of it, uh, over on the end of this chart, uh, amen, sin will be gone. Right. Sin will be gone. And when it's gone, it's heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you see, we're, we're, we are in, we are just about, we are just about in the end day. Yeah. Now someone said, oh, we will go away. I could, I'll prove to you by the Bible, as we go to over here, good Lord's will, I'll prove to you uh, over here a little bit and show you about the tribulation. Now, we are just about ready to leave out. That's exactly what it is. You see, Adam and Eve, they sin against it. That's where sin comes. Right? Amen. And you, every child that's ever born is born in sin. Amen. You know, when a, when you have a child, amen, if you sip a candy bar uh, or a, a, a supper, when they get up, they see what it is. You stick it up close, they reach to get it, right? Or you don't have to teach your children to sin. No, 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 they know all about it. Really. Right. And today they more, know more about it than we did when it was 25 or 30 years ago. But that's where we're living in today. That in fact, this is, and I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't take, uh, you don't have the IQ, uh, amen, of a, a real high, but if you've got anything to be able to talk, right, you can read through a Bible and find out that we are really, really close to the coming of the Lord. Amen. I, I read a man told me yesterday he, he believed the next five years and, and the Lord come get the church. I believe that maybe both two of that. I mean, I believe yeah. I'll be here. I, I don't believe I'll have to go in the way of the grave. 
I mean, I be here. Hallelujah. I'm not over the whole ground in one sky. Amen. Hallelujah. And, you know, because, hey man, I'm a free will agent. Hey man, I got saved when I was 27 years old, and I was tongue tied in the tongue plane. I'm a man who, uh, I, 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 I was as bad as that guy that used to sing. Yeah, and I was as bad as he was. Hey Amen. And I started, I went to, I went and got saved, and I couldn't, I, I didn't preach. I couldn't talk later on that. I used to go to the doctor when I was real young and he'd say, stick your tongue out. Hey Amen. And you know, you that, that tongue will come out a long ways. <laughs> that made you good, and I'll tell you that. And under that tongue, he would clip it. And I could talk a little bit better. And several days and months, it grew back. And I was worse, just as bad as it ever was. But when I got saved, I felt like I was called to preach. And I told God, I said, God, I can't talk when I'm on preach. And he showed me one night that he wanted me to preach. That's why I'm here standing here. He showed me. I'm not one of these guys that just decides a uh, good way to make a living. I'm too sorry to work. Uh, amen. I worked all my life. Amen. And preached to go along with it. Many, many times, many, many days. I pre used to preach every single night. Work every single day. Amen. One day when I first sermon I had preached, I was called to Road Baptist Church down uh, out of Richlands, and I got in the pulpit. I got in the pulpit, and the first guy I looked at when I went, got there was the chief of police in that town. And just a few weeks back, he told me, if you don't go home, boy, I'll put you in jail. <laughs> I'll tell you the reason, huh? <laughs> I read, I said, I, I didn't know, I was scared to tell me to that. I read my scripture, and as soon as I read my scripture, just like you'd have put something put out on top of my head. And I've never been tongue-tied since. And that's been 58 years ago. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. God can take care of everything you need. He can take care of you in the last days as well as the first days. Yes. So we please see how that the angel and the recreation uh, and the, he created earth, made the solar system. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I think it's pretty good to have 90 degree weather. And I would like to have about 70, 12 years, 12 months out of the year, if it's okay with God. <laughs> we don't see it that, that, that way, so we have to take maybe a little snow every now and then. But that's what, that's the way he fixed it right here. And then we'll come on over here in the recreation, that he, the way he made man. You know, he made man in an in a order form that he, I, I say this honestly and as grateful as I possibly can, but I believe God made man with it, that he was to serve God and be the head honcho of his, and raise a family and be nice to his family and be good to his wife, and be good and train his children up in the way. That's what the Bible said. And my right. only one of our problems. Amen. It's a shame and pathetic area. Yeah? And so many people uh, today, you know, we're living in a cruel world. I mean, we're living in a time. It's a dangerous world. Paul told you, in a perilous time. We're perilous means dangerous. So we are in a dangerous type of yes. place. So we need to understand. And then we'll come here, and as I said, he made man. And then we'll go here, and then we'll find how that in Genesis 4, 8, amen, it seemed like that everything was working in the wrong direction. Wrong direction. And then the creation of God. Original earth, Isaiah 45, 18, angels, they came along. Then he restored the earth, and then he tried man. Then he tried Angels. Angel fell, one fell. But the rest, a lot of others did too. But there are some still there. It's wonderful that God has got angels everywhere you go. Everybody that's accepted Christ as their Savior, they got an angel. You have 
can't see them, but he takes credit. How many times did he stop you before you maybe uh, something happened to you, see? So that angel took care of them. Uh, okay. So the we, and so he made man that he, he could feel, he could talk, everything. So you see, he, he created all of these things, and then we go here, and everything's smooth sailing. But Aunt Eve took care, she looked in that. Not too long ago, my family went on a trip with my son and his wife. And we went down in, uh, down in Kentucky, I can't think of the name, but it's pretty close. And, and, uh, and talk about the ark, ark. And, it, you know, it doesn't tell in the Bible about when Noah had the ark, how much hay he had to feed to that, but they had food, hay, and everything in that. If you ever get a chance, that's, that's kind of uh, pretty good to uh, go. But anyhow, they, they had these a tree of life. Sin came into this world. Yes. Sin has to leave out of this world before we can go to heaven. Right. And I mean, that's, you know, the plan of salvation is just, it's just as simple as you can get it. All you got to do is believe. That's right. And everyone that you got to put it in, in, in your heart, when you came here, I believe in system. All you got to do is to believe. What does it mean to believe? It means that you accept what you read in the Bible. Mm -hmm. God said it. <coughs> I read it. He means that. And so we are, we are accepted. We, we, uh, we, with God, he, you just turn your believing system on. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like turn a light on. Turn your believing system on. Somebody don't believe in that. But I say, well, I believe every single word of the, of the word of God. Amen. First of all, I don't understand in that Bible, and I'm sure there is for you, but I do believe in what I read, yeah. what I understand. Mm -hmm. I believe in. I believe in Jesus, and the important thing is this, and we'll take back on over here, but I'll tell you this right now. Jesus, death, burial, resurrection. <coughs> That'll take you to heaven. Yeah. Did you know that? That's your ticket to heaven. Hallelujah. You can't work it out. That's right. Amen. We couldn't get to the first notch if we had to work it out. You can't go to church and belong to every church in Bristol. You wouldn't get you no work. That's right. We must realize and understand that from then we go a little further and we find out how there's many things that's taken place after sin came into the world. In the days of Noah, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, just Noah entered in the ark. I mean, and he was told to build an ark. That's an amazing thing. I mean, that was a, you know, what he did, he sent the rain. Now, he had never had rain real hard then, but it, it rained, and no one was gone, and he did what God says. Well, God said, I'm coming back again. You believe he's coming? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so they be. All right. Yeah. And do you believe, all right? No one said, all right, I'll build it. He said, do it the way I tell you. So he gave him a diagram to build it. He built it just exactly like that. All right. From flood, we go, we find how that things begin to turn and he destroyed everyone. But what he said, he said, I'll put something, I'll never destroy you again. We'll never be flooded away. I mean, the water may get up, uh, amen, but we'll never be flooded like it was in Noah's day. But he said, I never will. God, it, it's amazing if we could just get in our mind, God's still in control. Yeah. He's still in control. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. He doesn't he doesn't change. It's settled, all done, made, put in concrete. Everything is settled down. Everything in this book will take place one day. This is sure as your name is what it is. They lived in a dispensation of innocence. 
Now, wouldn't it have been wonderful if they had never sinned against God, right? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if they had never sinned against God? Amen. Yeah. Heaven on earth. You wouldn't have weed to pull out your garden. <laughs> You would have had anything you want. You would have never had to worry about where you're going to get the next dollar. Of course, when we get over to, towards the end, I'll tell you how that's going to work out, too. A lot of people don't understand the millennial and Armageddon and all of that. It's on the end day. But we see, or everything that I've told you that is so far, all that is done behind us. That's the old covenant. All right? What did God do? Whenever Adam and Eve, they had two sons. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want to set, he want an offering. Okay, Abel offered what God wanted? A blood offering. Cain hit him out of the ground. Yeah. Cain got mad and killed Abel. Sin was in the camp. Yeah. And sin has been in the camp ever since that day. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So he said, replenish the earth. More. Children, children, more children. And everything began to, to take place. So when he had, when they, the murder took place, and then he could come over here to the fall. All of the people, everything failed. Everything failed. And he said, it's going to rain. I'm going to destroy what I've created. When you study about it and think about it, we're living in a corrupt world. Yeah. We're living in, in, a, in a world that people don't care about you. Right. We've got every kind of church that you can name. You just name it. It's out there, I guarantee. More false doctrines being preached today than ever that I remember of. Yeah. Me, everybody, this is wrong. And then this and preaches this way, this and preaches that way. <coughs> but there's only one way. Thank God. <coughs> Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said, as the day it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Brother, I want to tell you something. If we're not in the last days, don't wake me up. I'm sleeping. But I'm telling you, friend, we are in the last days. Yes, amen. We're yeah. in the day that the Lord is coming. Mm -hmm. And we need to get ready. Right. I preached it. I've taught this chart many, many times in different churches. The majority of people has never heard about the end day. But I want to tell you something, friend. If there's ever a time that America needs to wake up, we got problems in Washington, we got problems in Bristol, we got problems in every facet of life. You know, right. what, what does that make you wonder what day it is? The only solution that we can have. The only solution we can have is get back to God. Amen. Every Amen. church needs a revival. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need a revival. The soul said, if the Lord don't come back in a few years, you that are younger, you will see what I'm going to tell you. There'll be a time that there'll be church will be eliminated and a lot of services. We'll have a little short service. And that's about all you have. But he said, I'm going to destroy that. And you all have read that in the book, and you know exactly what's taking place about how that the flood came and destroyed them all. And then they went through the creation. They went through the innocent day. And then they went through the day of conscience. They recognized what they'd done wrong. She gave me that fruit. She said it was good and I eat of it. I'm going to sing for you. 
but their conscience, or they had to kill an animal to get clothing put on. Before they, before, when they was innocent, they didn't, they was both naked and they didn't know anything. But then when they, they ran, they hid themselves. Genesis said, where art thou? I heard your voice, Lord. Where was you at? Oh, that morning you gave me, she gave me something, to, and I took of it. She gave it to me. She said, why don't you give that to me? That serpent gave it to me. See, you can't pass it on. You got a choice to make yourself. You're a free moral agent. You have the right decide what you want to do in that life. So many times the people, they depend. Many, many times you'll find people down through life. It's, you know, it's really, it's, it's really a lot of times it's what mom and daddy did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's great. Come on in, sisters. We're getting along pretty good here. <laughs> Amen. Many people follow us after mom and daddy, but I want to tell you something, friend. My mom and daddy was pretty well Baptist, and I believe that they was as good as a male. Amen. They couldn't read or write. They didn't. They just come in a period of life and they get no education. We were all right. But they only took what they heard. Do you follow me? Preacher preached, and they took what they heard. Okay? For example, myself. Okay? I remember very specifically a lot. I used to lay on the front row of the bench, the altar bench, to sleep while they preached and sang and shouted. You know, we don't shout today. It is back like then, days. We don't shout today. We don't have. But I'm sure if they were sitting under the congregation here tonight, they might say, well, I don't understand that. I want to tell you something, friend. You're a free moral agent person. And you are living in a Pacific day, and you better find out what thus says the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It's not what I say. It's not what Joseph said, or not anybody else. No other preacher, no other man. It's what the Bible says. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 It's what the Bible says. Yeah. And so we find that there was a time uh, of. Uh, that they have conscious, they understood, uh, they realized uh, that they had sinned against God. Amen. Brother, I want to tell you something this evening. Amen. We better wake up in America and realize uh, that sin is on every side. Uh, amen. Praise God. Uh, amen. We're on a time uh, that we've never saw like it before. Amen. There are churches in Bristol here. Amen. They'll tell you they do what you want to and it's, it's not just going to oh, overdo it. I'm going to tell you something, friend. Sin is sin. I made my mistakes. You have too. Amen. I repented. I'm sure you that you have. I hope you have. I have been, but I'm going to tell you something, brother. You ain't live like the devil. Amen. They go to Sunday church. When the majority of people sit in church and they don't want to know what you get preached in the man of the moon. <laughs> right. Amen. 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 Somebody said, you're down there by yourself? No, I'm not down there by myself. But I'm telling you, friend, that's my television ministry. I, I, I've been on 13 years. I, I preach the gospel the best that I know how. I'm not there for the money. God provides the money. And I don't get a penny for it. Don't want nothing for it. Hallelujah, God. Amen. But I want to tell the truth of the Word of God. And I try my dead little best to preach what thus says the Word of God. And amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, God. Amen. And I've had people call me and want to sing. Amen. And I check them out. And if you ain't saved, you won't sing hard with it. <laughs> 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 when that young man said he was saved, I said, come on, brother. 
thank God for the tape and say, I want to tell you something, brother. I mean, I don't, I don't believe in going and telling jokes. I don't believe in and telling this and this and this and that and a bunch of junk. It's no good. It's no good. Amen. And God will hold you responsible for it. Right. Brother, just as sure as your name is what it is. Now, amen. When God has showed me many, many things now, in the Bible, amen, in 58 years, now, amen, that my mom and daddy didn't know even existed. Amen. It's, amen. Amen. It's not. It's not. You, you don't follow mom and daddy to heaven. Right. Hallelujah to right. God. My God. Right. 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 Preach a while, too. <laughs> Blessing, Lord. Well, I asked me, she told me last time, she said, are you going to teach or preach? <laughs> I'm telling you, friend, we need to wake up. It's you. It's you and me in this day. Hallelujah to God. So that was a, a, a time of consciousness. Now, amen. From the Paul to Adam to the flood. And we're going to, I don't know how long I've been up here. I've been maybe another five, ten minutes on this. I usually go about an hour. And if you got a question, we'll try to answer your question. And I, I soon have a little over an hour. But let me go about five, ten more minutes. Amen. Go over, over here to talk to they, they They realize their sin. They realize their sin. They hid themselves because they realize they sin. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get saved. You can't get saved until you realize you're lost. Right. Now, that's right. That's all right. Right. That's all right. 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 You cannot do it. Amen. Amen. But when you realize, yeah. all right, I'll, I'll give you this. You cannot. Amen. You cannot accept Christ until you realize you need him. Amen. Right. You cannot get healed until you realize he's a healer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Amen. You can't realize, you can't have your needs met until you realize that God meets your needs. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah to God. That's true. Amen. Just yesterday, yesterday, the man said, Brother Wills be back at the back. If you can have him in his ministry, it will be appreciated, I'm sure. This man came by, had the iPad and gone back, said, you see, and some of them gave me a little money for this and all that, my ministry and so forth. But this one man, he walked on out. And I stood there and talked to the preacher about 10 or 15 minutes. He came back because he had a big camera. He shot up and saw him coming through the camera. I don't wonder, he must have left his coat or, or something in here. So when he come back, he said, God won't let me leave. He must have went home. And he goes back from home. He had some money and he said, God told me to give you that. I want to tell you something, friend. I want to tell you something. God tells you to jump through that winter. That winter fall out when you get there. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Well, yeah. And if you don't obey God, if you don't obey God, then what he tells you to do, it ain't with a glove and that was he. Right. You'll spend more and more unless you obey God. That's right. Hallelujah to God. Yeah. So you see, they was living in a day, in that day, the length of time, and it was conscious from the fall of Adam to the flood. It's called a dispensation of conscience. They realized their sin. If America could realize and churches could realize and get sin out of churches, you'd be seeing people saved. Amen. Hallelujah. You sure would. If America, if America could realize, amen, if we really sincerely, we don't honor God like we should. Now, if you get too in in local government different things about like that if you you uh we better watch what makes somebody mad. But I tell you God don't make people mad he helps them. Right. Hallelujah. The length of time was a thousand six hundred and fifty six years from that time that I told you until the flood. And you're talking about trouble, they had it, didn't they? I don't they probably didn't have dough back in those days. But they had a marriage in marriage. The day that Noah entered into the ark. So, no doubt he went down and said, Boys, help me build this ark. God's going to send it rain. No, it ain't going to rain, never has. 
he was helping Ray when well, you better wake up. The Lord said, I'm coming. Now he ain't he coming. I heard that all the while. They didn't right. change it a bit more. Not a bit, a bit more. It was 1,600 years, 1,656 years, and the promise of, of, of redemption. After the flood, after the flood, after the flood, God said, I'm going to show you something in the sky. Goes around the rainbow. You'll never get it again. Then he said, I'm going to give you a promise of redemption. A promise of redemption. What is that promise of redemption? Now, Adam, he, I mean, Cain and Abel gave an offering. In the Old Testament, they gave offerings by the blood of the bulls and goats, and we call that the Old Covenant. All right. Then they had to come yearly and give that. Okay. Then he said, I'm going to give a different, or something else coming down. You can read it over in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, the last two verses there, about how that the promise, they was waiting on the promise. That line of people that they talked about faith in her, all, every one of them was, was waiting upon this redemption plan. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wow. There'll never be another one, but it's already here. Yeah. It came one day when a man went to the cross. Hallelujah, God. So you see, we find that at the age of conscience was to the time the flood came. He destroyed everything. But yet, he told Noah. He said, now I'm not going to destroy it. He said, you and your family, and you replenish the earth, and you take care of everything. So he promised redemption. He was testing to do well. He tested Abraham, I mean, Eve and Adam in the garden. He tested them. All right, why did he test them? Have you ever thought about that? To see what they would do. To see what they would do. I believe with all my heart that sometimes in life that God tests people. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Of course, we'll be preaching on that this week and tell you what the thorn was in 2 Corinthians if you don't tune in. A lot of people said it, I thought he didn't do it. But I'm going to back it up an inch. And I'll tell you what he will have if you tune in. The purpose of God was to man's obedience to the end of course. He wanted them to listen to him. You can't go any step. You can't have a good Christian life. You, you can't do anything in life until you listen to the voice of God. Somebody said, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the voice of God. Do, don't you read the Lord had a voice? I can prove to you. Amen. Just read. I preached on the voice of God on television. Showed you numerous places and, and about where God spoke. He spoke. Amen. Okay. If you be obedient to God, if you be obedient to God, I remember just as well as it was yesterday that I felt the God speaking to my heart to get saved. Just as sure as I'm standing in your presence, and I'll, I'll just tell you about it in about two minutes. Amen. This man was preaching at this place. He and I worked together. He wanted to come preach. I felt God want me to go to the altar because he had work for me to do. I didn't know that then, but he had work for me to do. I said, no. Well, right now we shared a brother living in Florida. So we said, uh, we speak it, so we went to Florida. So at the daytime, he was working, and his brother was working, and they stayed home. So I went out on the ocean. And, you know, walked up down the ocean, pulled my shirt off, had a big time. Two or three days. I started back home and drive like this. And we never stayed back in them days. And go around this curve and everything. Every time I seen a drugstore, I stopped seeing if I had anything for heart or sunburn. I like to die. I thought you were going to die. <laughs> and I'll tell you, the next time, brother, that I heard his voice, I went to the altar. I give my life to Christ. God speaks to you. He speaks to you. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Amen. The purpose of God is to make man obedience to the end of course. He speaks to don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Amen. He said to Abel and Cain, give me a sacrifice. Cain wouldn't do it. Abel did. But there was a failure. There has been a failure from this right here. On this chart, the failure started right in there, and there's been a failure ever since. And to inform you and to tell you, amen, there'll be a form a failure as long as time exists. Because we're in a sin day world. Right. And we do can come out of that sin and serve God. Now, amen. I'm in this for one thing. Somebody said, what are you in this for? If I was in it for the money, I have to, I, I just couldn't do it. Amen. I mean, if for one single thing, one thing, I want to go to heaven. Amen. Joseph, I want to kneel down at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. I want to look up and say, Lord, I want to thank you for pulling me down, pulling me up, and God down. Amen. And saving my soul. Yeah. You took care of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 85 years old. I'll live another 10 or 15 years. You know, maybe just stick around with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. He realized the failure and what judgment followed the flood. You can figure that down if you don't drown it. <laughs> That's not hard to figure out. Right. Amen. And then he provided, he provided, and said there's one coming. Now everything in the old covenant didn't work out. All right? Went a little bit longer, but that's all right. Tomorrow night, Coach Bill, I'll be talking to you about this right here. We'll start right here. Come over here. Come over here, and I'll explain. The old fellow said, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> That's hell. That's the empty place. If a person died before Christ went to the cross, they went down into what's called paradise. You read that when you read the word of man, Abraham, there's a meaning right back there, and you don't want to miss that. A lot of people don't know that. They think you're crazy. But they probably got a Bible to back it up. Yeah. So what can you say? You can't say I'm wrong. Right. Uh, I'm teaching you from the Bible. I mean, I didn't bring my serious candle out because I don't have one. It's not <laughs> extra. But I'm teaching from the Bible. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you see, there's a problem as far as that is the dispensation of comments. Amen, amen. So I hope I hit you a little bit on the beginning of time. Beginning of time. Who's got a question tonight? I mean, you take a question. All right, go ahead. All the way back at the beginning, uh, when we, in the first verse of the Bible, when it says God created the heavens and the earth. How much time was there between that time and the time that uh, is referred to in the second verse when it says the earth? Was yeah, form and void. Right. How much time was there? Yeah, is it was it a million years or one year or five years or what? It doesn't say how many how many years. Pardon? It doesn't say how many years. He could have well, been what, what do you believe? Well, I don't really know. I don't believe it was wrong. I really don't. I believe it like I, I believe whenever God created the heavens and the earth and all of that, and he said it's good. And I believe then he created the angels. And then I believe when he created the angels, there was a space of a time that after the angels until before Adam. And that's the time when Lucifer was Right. That was the time Lucifer was thrown out. But whenever he created the heavens and the earth, I believe, I believe that he just continued on. So it tells well, how, me. How did he 
out of the Bible, I mean, how did the earth become form without form, form and void? Uh, because God created it in the beginning, and, it, and you even said it was a yeah. perfect earth. Yeah. So how did it become uh, without form and void? How did it become? Yeah, from the perfect creation perfect state? Uh, to the uh, to when the none, to the not perfect. Right. When he, when he created the angels and Lucifer wanted to control, he was thrown out. He was responsible for the He earth. was responsible. For he was responsible for every sin that anybody ever done, or ever will do. <laughs> Amen. Is so, that it? So Lucifer was responsible for changing the earth from perfect to the unperfect. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Lucifer. He was the right old the best thing. Somebody else got a question. What, I know this is, uh, they say that dinosaurs, you know, are millions of years back, and I know that's evolution. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Uh, how does the Bible correspond with what they teach? I don't believe, I don't believe that they may have come along in different aspects of dispositions in the beginning of time. Before the earth was created, I don't believe there was anything ever gone. That's right. Okay. Uh, I had a discussion. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know a lot of people there, they believe that, that, you know, that there was things before God, and now we're so stupid. I don't you know. understand that you're saying that dinosaurs were around before the earth was created? Do what now? Are you saying that dinosaurs were around they before were the earth was created? They were not around. Not around. So yeah. when the science says that they were millions of years old, where were they at if they weren't on the earth? I don't believe they were around. You I don't care what the science says. I don't believe they were around. They may have come along in the early part of life, but as far as being around, in that day, well, I mean, they couldn't be around unless they were on the earth. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. But they were not on the earth because there was nothing on the earth to do. For God, for me, see, he changed the water and put it where it was. And I was so, I, I don't know what the scientist says now. I understand. Well, I, I, I just, some people believe that, that yeah. since man is, is 6,000 years old, so to speak, they, they believe that the earth is 6,000 years old. Yeah. And that, that can't be. They can't be. No way. No way. The Bible won't back it. The Bible won't back up any dinosaur in on earth. That's right. I mean. So the time of the, of the creation of the earth and the time that, that man was created don't coincide as being exact because man is 6,000 years old. But the earth has got to be more than 6,000. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it could be twice that, you know. I mean, when God created the heaven and earth, I mean, I, I, I feel like that he got the three angels, and then he got, uh, created a uh, man, and I think it kind of went a long way, ever how many years, and so forth. But, uh, but, but as far as, as anything that on earth, it wasn't well, like the earth. It wasn't uh, the earth. I don't think anything about that. I've, 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 I've heard scientists, I mean, news, I would say that people like it. I mean, you know, I don't believe that anything existed. Well, is there anything wrong with uh, believing that the earth is a million years old and that the, that the dinosaurs existed on earth before God, before Lucifer was torn? sat down and before man was created. We I mean, the fact that you believe that it, it was a million years. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't believe that and I'll tell you why. Because the Bible won't back it up. If the Bible backs it up, I believe. If the Bible won't back it up, well, no way. Well, the Bible, like you said, doesn't say time. It says God created heaven and the earth right. in the beginning. And there was no and, time on the angels. That's and right. there's no time connected with it. That's right. So a lot of people believe that between the first verse and the second verse is a gap of time which uh, nobody
Nobody knows how much it was, whether it was a million years or a or hundred thousand years or ten years, yeah. whatever the period was, yeah. that, that the dinosaurs could have existed at that time. Yeah. I mean, they could have. I don't know. I don't believe it is. That's me believe it. The Bible don't back anything up like that. Well, it says recreation, <laughs> yeah. and on the 28th verse of Genesis, when man was created, it said, go and replenish. The replenish. Earth. Replenish yeah. means to do again. Do again, that's right. Yeah. Exactly right. So it could be, it could not be. I don't know. So don't that know. means to me that there had to be somebody here on this earth before that time. And there had to be somebody before Adam and Eve. Right. Well, I'm not going to figure that either. <laughs> Where did they get their wives at? Well, over in the sixth chapter of Genesis, you'll find out how they brought children, children brought children, and children, and they married, Cain married his sister. You can figure that out. I mean, you know, that's, that's the way it is. I mean, they had children, 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 and he said, You can't have a children unless you have a man and a wife, though. Well, I understand. Or a man they, and a woman, Cain was a man, and he had a sister, and they had children, and they had children, they had children, you know. You know, I know a lot of people wondered where the colored people come from. Well, I've heard different stories on that, and uh, I feel like it maybe down through the ages of time, that Cain, maybe his son, his grand, very grand brother, and whoever like that might have married, and they produced the colors. So, you know, it's kind of a, uh, it, it's, it's kind of, you got to kind of size it up and take it, you know, in the way that, uh, that it is. Uh, but. It's, I know a lot of people, I know we're living in a day today that we are trying to find out what's above us. Who's having that? It's above us. And in the world. What's hell? That. I tell you about that one day, one night. Recently, I just saw in the news where it cost you so much to up in, in space and live. I was going to tell you something. To me, stupidities. I'm going to tell you something. When you, get the, when you go on God's territory, you pay the price. In this life or the life to come. One day, if you don't serve God, you'll be lost. And the world today has come to a place that we think was are smart. Yeah, it's true. True. Right. It's a smart word up. Yeah. yeah. The Bible, in the Bible, I feel like, I don't feel like there was anybody, no human being on the earth until Adam came. Right. I would stake my life on that. Mm -hmm. And when Adam come, you know what happened then. As far as anyone else, and I know I've heard people say there was, you know, them and they were some kind of this and some kind of that. Well, I'm, the Bible don't back that up. You know, that's the only book we got. Right. right. That's the only book that we got. You know. And of course, we got preachers in our country, and we got preachers all over the country. They'll tell you anything that you want to hear. That's true. But for me, uh, I mean, if 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 they had. Uh, Anything you name it before Adam, what difference does it make? Our life started in Adam. Yeah. He's your daddy. Yeah. Did you know that? He's your daddy. Amen. That's right. You might not accept it, but he is. Amen. It's because of him. And then that you have sin in your, in your life. That's true. Every person that's born has got sin. You, you don't get out of it. Somebody said, I'm a good man. I don't doubt that shall be. But there's a sin in a person. There's a sin in a person when you come along in life and recognize. Now, there's been a lot of questions about. And we go over here in the, in the Bible, and when Jesus was 12 years old, they say, you, you know, anything before 12, after 12 years old, you're, yeah, all 
case I've had children today is more brilliant than five and six years old than you and I was when we was 15. That's right. right. So I don't know what age it is. The Bible don't say exactly where you are. You know the Bible it is, right? Take it like it is. You know, I, 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 I believe that we need to take it literally just like it is. Amen. Yeah. If it was uh, whatever, you know, you just fill in the blank, whatever is there. Ten more. Adam come along, and, and if there's anything there, I don't believe there was anything there because God, I mean, I've searched the Bible for, for a long, long time, and I ain't never found any word in the Bible that it talks about that. I can put the, the and I'm not saying that I'm the brightest man of the race, don't misunderstand me, but I, <clears throat> when I started studying the Bible many, many years ago, I began to put it together. Adam and Eve come. God put the land there. Put Adam and Eve here. Sin come. And the animals were sacrificed. Came out on earth to the time Christ came. He died on the cross. That was the end of it. He's the one. You accept him or you don't go to hell. Unless you accept Christ, you will go to hell. Right. Just as sure as your name is. Yeah. And I believe in Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in heaven. I, I, I believe in heaven is having a little conversation. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't, the Son don't do anything to just to make the Father mad. They are in unity. Mm -hmm. That's where we're failing today. I want to tell you something, friend. You need Jesus. You need God the Father. You need God the Son. You need God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The Bible says there's three witnesses. Right, exactly. And we're witnesses to three distinct God here. People. He said in the Bible, He said us. You know what us is? That's only one. Right. <laughs> yeah. Amen. These people that said they one. They need to be the Bible. Amen. Right. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. There'll be many. Uh, I don't. I really and truly. I mean, this is I said I'm going to go to heaven. I want to preach the Bible in season, out of season. It took me a long time to, to get that verse of scripture in my heart. Paul told him, he said, preach the in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering doctrine, when the time will come, they will not endure sound doctrines. Mm -hmm. You're really reading that? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought about that, you know. I thought, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that certain tips are coming to you? Preach good and sometimes can't. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it, Joey? Yeah. I, want, I, want, I want to tell you about this. And I feel I'm, I feel like if you go to church on Sunday morning, and you get in front of the high pulpit, and if you get anointed, if you get anointed, and that's where the church is staying, don't have anointing to nothing. If you get anointed of the Spirit of God, and He will follow you right back into somebody else, and that person, that person, that person, and you will receive it, and you will understand what it's talking about, and you're preaching in season. <laughs> <laughs> you're preaching in season. Yeah, amen. When it comes out of season, Joseph gets up there, and he preaches, <clears throat> and he preaches, and you sit there. <laughs> out of season. Not every day, not every church style of service you go to that you are really receiving what Christ wants. You know what it means to worship? Jonathan, what's the worship spirit in the truth? You know what worship is? Amen. You study the word worship and you'll find out it's to get up here or in front on the ground and begin to worship. Yeah. And then worship, what you do, you take yourself. Now you listen to me just a minute today. You take yourself and you get God and you forget about what he's preaching about. Amen. And you thank God, God, come into my life. 
Help me, Jesus. I've got a problem. You're worshiping with him. What he says don't count. He's just preaching. But I want something. I'm going to worship you. I want to get in with you, Lord. I, 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 I want to get into where I can get, where I can receive that. I need a job, Lord. I want you to send me uh, someone so I can get a job. I need a, a financial help. Send me some finances. And he just puts his heart out. But what you and you and God is talking, and you and God is worshiping. Yeah. I mean, sometimes when we, we go to church, we say, well, we ain't worshiping the Lord, you know. You, you, you need to read the Bible and understand what it says. Amen. So you are, you're, you're, you're getting in, in other words, it's like this, friend. You get in connection with God. How many times you go to church that you didn't get in connection with God? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Uh, I'm thinking, that. brother, it's because we don't prepare ourselves before we get there. Well, we it got to get on our be. knees. You're probably right. I don't doubt that a bit. That's what it, it. Well, if you prepare yourself before you leave home or for that week, when you go there, when you get there, then you and God will have a good time. Right. And then you'll worship. And if you go home and your wife says. What did he preach on me? You say, I don't know. I was talking to God. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's just what I said. You know, I just said. A lot of people come to church because it's Sunday, and that's the time to come. If you don't come, Joseph will right. say, Where's God going? Well, they say, he got a headache, didn't come to him. But when you come to worship God, nine churches out of ten don't have a thing in God's head but a form. Right. The form of God. Right. The man of the right. God. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 I'm not saying this to boast wells or anything like that, but I appreciate that this church is a full house and a big crowd. Amen. And I started preaching, and the Spirit of God began to anoint me, and I preached for a little over an hour. Anoint me in a way that I never hardly seen it before in my life. Amen. But what happened? What, what happened? And me and God got together. I went to church a lot of times. I'd be able to preach and I'd swan on the roof. You can't preach at all because you got a crowd sitting there church that drive them on you. And read the Bible an inch that day and that week. Ain't prayed a prayer. Can't get along with their neighbors. Anybody else got a question? Turn that to it. Anybody else? Back on the salvation or the age limit. Uh -huh. I believe when you get at that age that God speaks to you and lets you know that you've done wrong is the time to accept him. I give you a 100% agreeable. 100%. Amen. I don't ever recall ever feeling the presence of God until I was in my 20s. Now, I was afraid of God. I was afraid of God. Somebody said, well, what are you afraid of? God well, was afraid if I wrecked my car and got killed, I'd go to hell. Yeah. I didn't know anything about hell. I heard a preacher say, hell was a bad place to be, so I sure didn't want to go. Amen, amen. And we got married when I was fairly young. Had a hard way of life. I thought to myself before I got saved, you know, if, if this is all life is, you work all the way from, you make $35 a week, you spend $5 for groceries, $20 for rent, $5 a week for gas, you know, my rent. If that's all life is, it ain't worth much. Do you ever feel that, 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 that way? I'm back in the early 50s, late 50s. Some of y'all ain't got there yet. <laughs> Money went to some more then. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But then one day I found a man, and his name is Jesus. Amen. And from that point on, my life changed. Changed. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. Yeah. I can stand here and tell you I don't have a lot. 
I don't want a lot, but if I want it, I get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever God, I say, God, I'd like to have that. And I'll guarantee you that, I, that I'll get it. Guarantee you will. He's my father. Yeah. He's my father. Man. Anybody else got a question? I want to hold you all right. Come back tomorrow night. Yes. And we'll get into some more. Did you understand what I was talking about tonight, the dispensation of time? Now, if you didn't, you ask a question, I'll slow down. One lady wrote me a letter and said, I'd love to hear the preacher but preach too fast. What the hell did I tell you? I was just reading about that verse you all talking about, about Genesis 128, about the replenishing of the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Replenishing the old, and uh, I'm, I'm sure all of us here have the have a King James Version Bible, the uh, 1749 Revised Edition. Uh, but the 1611 edition, the word replenish actually comes from an old French word. Yeah. But the English term of it actually meant to fill. And if you actually go into it, um, um, I actually have a candle here with a strong concordance on it. And it actually breaks down the Hebrew, uh, the original Hebrew that it was written in. And the word used was male, uh, same way we spell male down here in the yeah. south. But yeah. M-A-W slash uh, L-A-Y. And it actually is used as words such as fill, full, fulfill, concentrate, right. accomplish. It means it's, all of that. Yes. When you talk about replenish, that's exactly what it's talking about. Yes, but it means originally to fill, not exactly to refill as if there was something else here, but it's just to fill. Yes, fill. yes, just to fill. That's right. You, it's there to refill. Yes, yes. Yeah, and the old, the old vernacular of replenish back in the time which the 1611 yeah. Bible was written in, was just used as a filling adjective, yeah, not exactly, right. not exactly yeah, refilling something as we think of nowadays. I believe all my Bibles now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he, so he filled it in or replenished every how that you want to put it together. Yeah. Yes, you know, he, any how, any way that you want. Take all kinds of words in the Bible and oh, yeah. get another edition that well, see, changes all this, words around. All the Bible's written yeah. in Greek and Hebrew, see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that, that, that's what, basically what it means, you know. Now, it's just like you're talking about being filled with the Spirit. But how much of that, what is, when is it filled? You know, so it means different things. But that's, that, that's a good thought there, young man. Anybody else? All right. Anybody tomorrow night be with us? Well, let's learn something together. I don't know it all, but I'll try to tell you what I know. Yeah. And maybe when we get there, you can tell me something, and I'll know something. So we'll both be happy, and we we'll all know something. <laughs> 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 Amen. Let's give Brother Wells a big hand here in the corner. He enjoyed the wonderful, wonderful teaching tonight. Uh, Thank God for that. Amen. Appreciate the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. I was inviting somebody to come and be with us this week, and they said, well, preacher, I'm not uh, into dispensation and all of that. And uh, they was more of uh, Reformed theology or uh, uh, and, and all of that. And I said, well, uh, just because, uh, you know, we're not saved by what's going to happen in the future. We're saved by what Jesus has done in the past. Amen. And so a lot of times you can come to the house of God and you can learn something that will help you and benefit you, even if you don't believe exactly like everybody else does. And so what a blessing it is to be here tonight and a blessing to have each and every one of you here. We want you to come back tomorrow night and all this week as Brother Carter uh, Brother Carter will continue the teaching of the plan of the ages. Invite a friend. If everybody here tonight would focus on one person and bring one person back with you tomorrow night, we'd have twice as many as we got tonight, as long as you didn't lay out yourself. Amen. <laughs> so let's try to come back tomorrow night, have a good time, and just enjoy more teaching tomorrow night. Can we? Amen. Anything on anybody's heart before we dismiss? All hearts and minds clear. We appreciate each and every one coming out and being with us tonight. Come back tomorrow night. Pray much about tomorrow and try to bring somebody with you. And let's just enjoy the blessing of God together. Shake hands with Brother Wells tonight. Uh, greet him and let him know that you enjoyed the service. And I know that will be a blessing to him. Uh, we're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer at this time. And we're going to ask uh, Brother Paul to dismiss us if he would.
Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we appreciate this hour of service. Thank you for the brother.